There we go. It says live now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. In today's video, I do have a sales update for the last two weeks because I didn't get to make one last week, but also I thought we would tackle five bad reseller advice myths in this video because I was looking at some of my sales and I thought, you know what? If I had listened to some of the advice I've heard out there or some of the comments I get from my haul videos telling me that doesn't sell or you can't blah, 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 um, then these uh, things would never have been sold this past couple of weeks. So I thought that would be fun to talk about. So I want to hear from you. If you have any reseller advice or myths that you've heard that you think might not be true or that you have seen you know the proof is in the pudding that they're they're not true or always uh, leave a comment and if you're live leave a comment over there and I'm gonna jump into the comment section once we've gotten through the meat of the video so I can come say hey answer questions and see what kind of myths you guys uh, have heard also and I'm interested to see if you get, if you can predict what the myths are that I'm gonna share the bad advice. Okay, uh, and if you're new here, welcome. I've had so many new subscribers uh, and I'm really glad that you're here. If you're new, then go over there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when I put out new videos about selling on eBay. I'm very passionate about that, helping people make extra income or even a full-time income if you put the time and work into it. It's definitely an option, so I'm here for you. Okay, so here we go. Let's dive in. Oh, I've got three sales that I made to viewers, and that happens sometimes, and I love it, because when I do haul videos, uh, it's one less step for me to have to list it, and then I can cut a deal with somebody who watches, and, and I enjoy doing that. So, I sold a lot of the Littlest Pet Shop that I got, um, all the mini ones, and then one or two of the bigger ones I sold to a viewer for $15. Now these prices for my invoices, that does include the shipping. So later they won't, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, the second item that sold from a haul video was the Civil Liberties mug. It was the mug where the Bill of Rights disappears when you put the hot liquid in it. Um, sold that for 20 and then the blue chunky snowman that I also got at the bins sold for $25. So those were some good sales that I was happy to have shared with you guys. All right, let's dive in to my eBay sales first. I'm going to switch over. There we go. All right, eBay sales. And as I get to the item, I'll tell you the myth that went along with the item yeah, that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> I don't know what it is today, but I have butterflies. I, I, I do videos all the time, and I'm live frequently. But I don't know what it is today. Something in the air. I'm getting butterflies. All right, so first up, this is a brooch that sold. It was a Tree of Life brooch. And I bought it for about $2, and it sold for $12. Now, these sales, my eBay and my Etsy sales, the numbers that I tell you, two things. One, do not include shipping uh, because I do not do free shipping. I do buyer pay shipping. So the shipping is something the buyer pays extra on top of the price I'm telling you. Second, if you see a price here, it says $19.99, then the $12 that I accepted was either an offer that the buyer sent or whenever I have the opportunity to send an offer to watchers, I do that because I get so many sales from doing that. Okay. Hi in the chat. I do see you. I will come over and talk in the chat in just a minute. Okay. Next thing. So the one of my myths did not go with this one. And okay, here's one. This is one I get a lot, which surprises me. So this is a Minnie Mouse mug that I got in the bin. So it cost me 10 cents because my Goodwill outlet, um, all of the breakable items are 20. You can get 20 items for $1.99. So I try my best to make sure I walk out with 20 breakable ceramic glass type items because whether I get 10 items or 20 items it's a buck 99. Um, so this mug sold for $25 and then the buyer paid the shipping on top of that and one of the comments I get on almost all of my mug videos or if I'm doing a haul video with mugs or I get the comment almost every time mugs don't sell. I have mugs they just sit they don't sell. Some people are like not upset about it, but like, darn it, my mugs won't sell. But some people are just like flat out, I don't know why you're bothering, mugs don't sell. 
I probably sell at least one mug a week, if not more. Some weeks I sell three, four mugs. So I think it just depends on the on the uh, subject matter of the mug. So you maybe have to be a little more discerning with your mugs. <laughs> okay, so that's the first, what, what did I call it? Reseller bad advice myths. I wasn't quite sure how to word that, but I think you get the gist of it. All right, second item. This is a little Amish Christmas ornament. And this one I got at the bins as well. This was 10 cents because they counted it as a breakable. And I sold this for $20. So this one, I took a best offer or sent a, an offer on this one. And this is my second myth. And I know if Jenny's in the chat, she can attest to this one. Second myth is you need to hold on to those holiday items and list them in the fourth quarter. I completely disagree with that. And I've got a couple of sales in this sales video alone to prove Christmas sells year round, Halloween sells year round, holiday stuff sells year round. So some people will say, well, if you can get a bigger price for it later, that may be. Um, but I put, my, I put my items up at the price I want and people can either take it or leave it. Oh, hi in the chat. I see Brenda Gabble. She's uh, one of our members in the, she clicked the join button. So if you're interested in that, go check out the join button. But thanks for being here, Brenda. I'm so glad. All right. So that was my second myth. Christmas, holiday, holiday items sell year round. Get them up. They'll sell. Okay. They probably sell more closer to that time frame, but they definitely sell. Okay. Next item. This is a Batman comic book that if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you will have seen that a few, so I guess it's been a month or more back, uh, a friend of mine gave me nine long boxes of comics, flat out gave them to me. She didn't want any money or any payment or any anything for them, long story. But um, this one sold, and this was one, so I paid zero for it, and it's, I took an offer of $25 for this Batman comic. I need to get on those comics again and get them up. Okay, um, I'll be back in the chat. I'll be back. I see your comments. All right, so next up, this was not another one of the myths. Comics, yay. Next up is the Stella and Dot Christmas, uh, not Christmas, but Crystal Stretch Bracelet. Uh, this was from, I believe, a thread up box. And so I put, a, it cost me probably about a buck. And I took an offer of $10 on this one. This is one that could have been one of my myths because I get this one, especially in the jewelry community or not necessarily a myth, but pe the question people ask a lot is, how do you list something if it's not a brand name? This one is a brand name, but jewelry will sell if it's not brand name. And I will show you. So that was a bonus myth for you. Right here, I've got these silver tone cowboy boot earrings. They're not any brand. Somebody probably just wanted them because rodeo. Rodeo! And these ones sold. I've got them for a dollar, and they sold for $22. So that is another one so yeah it doesn't have to have a brand name on it to sell <laughs> all right okay, i sold this watch lot uh, i put that it cost me about a buck because it was bits and pieces from thread up boxes or just broken bits and things um but i ended up taking a, an offer of nine dollars on this i was doing this as an experiment just to see like can i reap any sort of benefit from broken watches or watches that don't have batteries and things like that and yeah, it didn't take too long. Look at this horrible picture, too, y'all. Don't take my advice on this picture. It was horrible. This was a total, let's see if this will sell, <laughs> uh, experiment. Okay, next up, how many of the, we've done two official of the uh, bad advice. So, so we've got more coming and one bonus one. All right, next item, this is a sterling silver ring with amber in it. And I've lost, here we go. I paid about two bucks for this ring and it sold for $25. So I'm looking down here on my chart that I have for you. Oh, yay. Okay. Mugs. I see people in the chat talking about mugs and jewelry and, oh, yay, Squirrel Thrift, another one of our friends from the join button. Hello. Thanks so much for being here. That's what, if you see a little star next to their name, that's what that means. Okay, so here's another one that's like, I consider this kind of a holiday item because it's skulls like Day of, Day of the Dead type Halloween-ish 
um, item. So this uh, is something I picked up for a dollar, these earrings and this wire wrap bracelet, and these sold for $15. Then, next item um, are these earrings, and I almost, I almost didn't list these because I just thought they were just kind of like, meh. They weren't anything amazing or cool or different. They were, eh, they're okay. But I guess I just have to get over whatever. Okay works too. Uh, because these ones I got from a thread out box, so paid maybe a buck for them, and they sold for $15. Maybe this is one of my, one of my tips. Mm, no, the next one. Uh, okay, so, not the next one. It's coming. I just want to make sure I don't miss any. I'll have to go back. All right, next up is this Southwest Copper Bracelet, and it, uh, I got this for a dollar, and it sold for $18. So, again, it was probably just one of those that I sent, I can't even remember what it's called, Send Offer, I think it's just, I try to make it fancy, Send Offer. And then this is a Chico's Necklace. Uh, this one, again, I got in the thread out box, so about a buck, and I took an offer of $19.35 on this one. So, okay, here's my next one. I could have done this on the other as well. Next up is this Alex and Andy bracelet that sold. And I got this from a thread out box, so it cost me about a dollar. And I took a, an offer of eight bucks on this. So whether it's eight bucks or nine bucks, another piece of advice or myths that I hear are people saying don't waste your time on smaller ticket items. Only go looking for things that are going to bring you more profit, which I, I feel like I say this all the time, which is like, that's amazing advice if you have high ticket items around you. Sometimes you just have to sell what you can find. And if I didn't have some of these lower ticket price sales, 9, 10, 11, 12 dollars, then I wouldn't have my $460 for these two weeks. So I am totally fine making 5, 10, 15, dollar profits, smaller, I think $15 is more than a small profit, but $10 or less, I'm still okay with those kind of profits because it all adds up, you know, it's like a jar of pennies, you throw your change in, you throw your change in, throw your change in, next thing you know you got 500 bucks in a jar, right? So I don't sneeze at little smaller sales, so I know that's a, some people find that very contentious, I don't know why. But everybody's got their own business model, so if you do, if you only want bigger ticket items, no problem. No skin off my nose. Okay, pardon me. Jenny says, yeah, small ticket items can be turned into $100 bills. That's right. And with a few of mine, that's what happened. Ten bucks here, nine bucks there. All right, next item that's sold is this sterling silver scroll work ring. And this one um, I got in that $500 lot of jewelry that I bought a while back. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to say this for until the end of time. I still haven't finished showing you the rest of that lot. Uh, but uh, this one sold for $15. And then this next item is another one of these awesome finds from the bins. I just sometimes can't believe what I find in the bins. But this is a glasses case that we found in the bin, silver plate. Uh, and so, may, I mean, definitely less than a dollar because my bins, it's like buck forty-nine a pound, but I put a buck for this and it sold for $35. All right, so let's check off. So we've talked about don't waste your time with low ticket items. We've talked about um, save the holiday stuff and we've talked about mugs don't sell and then the bonus one for jewelry. But there's still two more. Let's see if you can guess what they are. <laughs> okay, next up, let me get my spreadsheet on the right part down here. All right, next up, this is a little, like a sushi box thing for making sushi. Takamura, okay, Umasubi maker, sushi press. Okay, so this one I got in the bins, uh, and I so I put about 50 cents on that. Did I get that in the bins? Because I put 50 cents over here. Hang on, let me scroll over and click on my, what is the inventory? Yeah, B. Okay, so I put 50 cents on that because I got it in the bin, so it probably cost me about 50 cents. And it sold for 10 bucks. Low ticket item, I'll take it. Um, so another thing that sold this week, I sold two of these, is I sell mystery boxes of jewelry where I put five to 10 pieces of jewelry in a 
six by four by four box. And so this one sold for $17, $16.99. And there's the other one. So there's two of them. Uh, this is another, okay, so this is my third one. This is a tie bar that sold. I probably picked it up for 50 cents. It sold for $10. And I can tell, and I, if I went back through, Etsy's really good about saying when you listed the item or how many times it's been renewed and things like that. Um, I can tell just by the photographs that I've had this up for a long time because I don't have any photos of the back. I don't have pictures of the measurements, blah, 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 blah. Um, so the second or the whatever number we're on for the fourth one is you need to have fast flips. If it didn't sell within the first one, two, three months, you got to drop the price, drop the price, drop the price, move it, move it, move it. Um, I don't do that generally. I usually just list it and forget it. And this is one of those items. There's actually a few items here that I just listed and forget it. Now I know the fees can can accumulate, but um, it's not really that much or that big of a deal um, in my view. So I'm okay with having things sit for a longer time. Now generally if it's been there a year, two years, then it might be something to look at, you know. But at that point, if you pull it down, you might as well just leave it up. I don't know. Anyway, that's my thought. <laughs> so making sure the myth that you need to like if it doesn't sell very fast you need to start dropping the price dropping the price drop. I hear that a lot too so but again everybody has their own business model so if that's your thing that's your thing no uh, yeah I'm not throwing shade at you it's just not my thing okay next item I wonder what the last myth will be put it in the in the chat if you're watching live what do you think the last of the of the reseller myths I'm gonna bust. <laughs> it's gonna be. All right, so next up is this Texas brooch, and I paid 25 cents for it. I think I got it at a garage sale, and it sold for $15. And then this is my next one. Okay, one, it fits the mug mold. Two, the myth that you can only sell items if they are in perfect condition. This mug had serious damage so things will still sell that are damaged as you can see there's a chip there um, there's a lot of crazing which is that kind of like crackling underneath the glaze there's a big crack going down the side right here and I enumerated all of the flaws I made sure to get pictures of all the flaws all the chips and all there's another crack there and all the little chips on all the pieces there's another little bump and ding there y'all this mug sold hang on I'm clicking on the wrong thing and it had this little like porcelain frog on the inside but we had to talk about it when I got it um, because I got it at the bins so it cost me 10 cents and it sold for $18 so if I had gone with the advice that oh and I know I remember agonizing over this. Do I list it? I don't know. It's like damaged, and I guess I'll just give it a try. Um, but if something is collectible enough, if there is a market for it, if it is even like a a couture or a, a piece of jewelry that has a collector base and it's missing a stone, it can still sell. It's not going to sell for the amount, the top dollar, but it's still going to sell. Uh, a few months back, I sold a Darth Vader figure that was completely decapitated. Okay, so damaged items can sell if there is a uh, following or a collector base. So this frog mug sold for $18 with flaws and all, warts and all, since it's a frog. Toad? He's got warts. Okay, he's got warts. All right, next up. The next item that sold is this a sterling silver bangle, and I love bangles a lot. So it was kind of hard for me to sell this, but I paid a buck for this and it sold for $30. I just liked the, uh, it was kind of rustic looking and it looked like somebody had hand done the little carvings in it. I don't know. I just liked it. And then finally, and then I'm going to come to the chat and this goes again with the listing it and needing to flip it fast myth. This has been up for a really long time too. And this is a little unicorn charm that I've had up for, I don't know, at least a year, if not more. And I paid 50 cents for it. It was probably in a lot. And then it sold for 10 bucks. So I will take it. Small amount, listed it a million years ago. 
it's sold today or this past week or so. It's in this video. So I'm definitely happy with that. Okay, so those are our, let me go over those myths again. So damaged items won't sell. Now I'm not saying, you know, you go buy a damaged pair of earbuds and try to sell them, but something that has a collector base. Like this little thing. Here's another thing. Like this is this has got some damage and wear to it, you know. But it's cute. It's a tree topper. I got it at the bins. If I keep if I don't keep it, I think it'll sell. Um, so stuff like that, you know, it just depends on what it is. Two, uh, not to waste your time on low ticket items. I had a lot of low ticket items this this couple of weeks that really brought my sales numbers way up. Um, the third myth is to make sure you're flipping things fast, fast, fast. Again, that's some you know different business models and so nothing against it if that's the way you do it but you don't have to do it that way um, saving it for the holidays that's another myth that things sell for holidays all year round and the fifth one and my favorite mugs don't sell I sold two just in the last week or so okay so let me come look in the chat and um, if you're done and you're like I don't want to hear chat then thank you for being here go leave me a comment leave me a thumbs up if you are pleased with what you heard today. Leave me a thumbs down if you thought I could have done a better job and tell me what I could have done better because I definitely want to know. But if you're here in the chat, then I'm going to come hang out with everybody and see who's here. Um, thanks for being here, everybody. So, uh, yeah, I, I tried to get the, the link up so there was a little confusion about, wait, is it started? Is it over? Um, but I wanted to plan ahead. Because I know sometimes uh, you guys like to know when I'm going to go live instead of just, ta-da, here I am. Okay, Lisa says, hi, it's my first time here. Hi, Lisa. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, no. Hang on. I'm looking to see if I see any other reseller myths that are in here. Okay, Celeste says, I know, right, I get all, told all the time that my stuff won't sell, but I know they do. I know, right? I think... Almost anything will sell, truly. Um, let's see. Land Shark Picker says free shipping on eBay gives you a bump in search. Myth or fact? I don't know about that one. I mean, I've heard it, but maybe? That's a maybe. I don't like doing free shipping. I feel like, cause, because I do best offer, people, I think technically they understand that free shipping isn't free shipping but the price for the shipping is rolled into your item. So, I don't know. I've tried it before, but I don't know. It stresses me out. It's, I don't know. Um, oh, I don't know. Amy says she's uh, attracting scam buyers on eBay. I don't know. I've only ever had one that was a suspected scammer in all of my years of reselling. So I'm hesitant to, I don't know. It just depends. Hello, Doug. Yes, I'm having a good day. Thank you. You guys make sure to go check out. And lots of our friends in the chat have YouTube channels, so click by their name. Doug just started his. So click click by their names and see if they have a YouTube channel so that you can uh, follow some of our some of our other reselly friends. And if you don't, why not? <laughs> so next, um, oh, I, if I'm missing one, let me know. M Myra says, I'm, I'm new. I finally had my first sale. Yay, congratulations. Okay. Sharice, and I hope I said your name right, says myth, raise prices and don't offer free shipping. I have done that. Um, for example, like when you have a lot of watchers on an item, I don't offer free shipping. And then when I have a lot of watchers on an item, I do sometimes either raise the price or lower the price, just depending on my mood. And uh, it can kind of, because it, sometimes it'll send, I say sometimes, because some people say they don't get messages when the prices are adjusted, but I do. So um, then the person who's watching it can get a, you know, the price just changed on this item that you are watching. So let's see, uh, seller myth that sellers and eBay say it won't sell if you don't put free shipping. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't go with that one. Um, well, let's see. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah, Celeste says, mugs are one of the things people tell me won't sell either. Okay, more for me. <laughs> I like selling them. Barbara says patience is is virtuous. Virtuoso. Yes. And Brenda, again, thank you for being here. So, let's see. Jenny, Jenny says just about any unique nativity will sell. This is true, yeah. So, 
And Andrew said, sold three Christmas items, all over 75 bucks this week. Totally. And Hanny says, I picked up a Tasmanian Devil mug for 89 cents. It sells for 150 to 200 bucks on eBay. Whoa. See, that's one that sometimes I'm like, ooh, is that uh, sat too saturated? But maybe not. I got to double check. I just have to double check. So, talking about selling mugs and Christmas stuff. Okay, Abby says, do you think it's a myth? that we should only sell what's popular versus what we like or enjoy collecting and selling. I do think it's a myth because I don't do it. <laughs> I, um, I definitely know that there's a lot of money to be had in music, shoes, clothes, but if you don't, what's the point <laughs> if you don't like what you do? Now, of course, if I was, if what I was doing wasn't working and I needed to make the money, then of I would definitely go and do more research and do more digging and to make to seeing about those type of items because that's you know of course you got to pay your bills but I also want to enjoy what I do so I definitely enjoy picking up vintage items weird things just funky stuff that I don't know um, it makes me happy and then when I see it sitting around my workroom I don't grumble like oh gosh here I go because then it feels like work right um, because that's the fun part about reselling is that it, it's like we're treasure hunters you know and you can treasure hunt whatever strikes your fancy and sell it that's yeah so sorry went off on a longer tangent than I thought I would there um yeah you did Thrifting in the UK versus the US is definitely different. And Squirrel Thrift, again, thank you so much. And if you see little stars, again, if you see a little star by people's names, um, they hit the join button if, and you have joined. So if you're interested in that, then go check it out. So um, Nancy says, how often does ThreadUp offer those rescue boxes? I keep checking all the jewelry ones are sold out. The ThreadUp ones, I they don't um, notify when they re stock their thread up boxes but in my group I have a group called Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers and I just saw a post today somebody said the thread up boxes are back so people will often share in there but I think it sold out like really fast and then the Goodwill boxes which I have a mini stack right over here those ones go live and they and you can sign up the Goodwill Blue Box their website goodwillbluebox.com and they go live Friday and I think it's either five or six central time um, but if you get on there I'm gonna sneeze if you get on their um, email list you'll get an email reminding you it's gonna restock tonight I swear I'm gonna sneeze <coughs> excuse me Whew. that was potent um, <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, Shane says, I've seen people take the works out of watches and make little shadow boxes in the watch case, and people who are into steampunk stuff, totally. And the, the watches that I sold, I wasn't going to sell them individually, so I thought, let me just see if I can make a few bucks instead of re-donating them or giving them to the kids to play with. Um, Barbara says, does anyone else think it's cray-cray that one can remember what one bought seven months ago for a buck versus what one ate for dinner? I don't know. I don't. I keep I keep the inventory note on my listings because I won't remember. So and now I'm trying to think of what I had for dinner last night. Salad, a spinach salad. Okay. Um. Myra says I can only do ten listings. I have had one sale, so they'll up my listings. Oh, good. That's good. Um. Yeah. Some people remember have a me very strong memory. Um. Jessica says, I sell vintage. It's in my store name. I see things like filters, tools, modern decor. I know it will bring money. I'm conflicted on staying true to my name. What are your thoughts? Um, that's the tricky part about picking a name, you know? Um, is there a way to change it? I think it's okay if it's vintage in your store name. I think it's okay, personally. That's just me, though. It'll become a vintage eventually. If it's not vintage now, give it a couple years. <laughs> right? We're 2020. Wait, we're in 2020. So on Etsy, anything 
year 2000 and before is considered vintage. So from now on, everything's vintage in my eyes because I can't get over that fact. Oh, I see a super chat came in. Let me click it. Can I click it? Maui Delight says, I appreciate your knowledge. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for that $5 super chat. That means so much. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see. I am looking. Um, bu -bu -bum. Schedule. Okay, we talked about the Goodwill Blue Box. Lisa says, should I purchase batteries for watches? I have a couple nice watches that need batteries. Yeah, and you can get them at the dollar store. They sell packs of them. We got a couple of packs that have different sizes. I think we got them at the dollar store. Because then you just kind of want to have, I mean, you don't need like the highest end battery. Um, you want to show that it's working. So, yeah. Uh, Shane says, there's a saying in Yiddish, it translates to a little and a little makes a full glass. I'm glad you didn't put it in Yiddish because I would have embarrassed myself trying to pronounce it. So, <laughs> let's see, any more in here? Where do, oh, okay. Ginny asks, where do I sell my mystery boxes? I thought eBay banned them. I sell them on Etsy. I don't think I have any on eBay. Yeah, I have it on Etsy, and then I just have a um, quantity, however many, so it doesn't go away if somebody buys it. Yeah. And then I sell m mixed lots of jewelry that I, just if somebody asks, I have bags of craft jewelry. So I do that. Wearable, repairable. Oh, I got a sticker. <gasps> Lay my, my, oh gosh, I'm going to say the wrong name. But look, uh, I love, I, I just saw the, the little sticker things that YouTube uh, started doing too. It's, it's like, what are they called? It's like super chat and then there's like super stickers or something like that. But thank you for that little pair. It's so adorable. <gasps> thank And thank you for the $10 super chat. That's very kind of you. Um, thank you. So I'm looking again and I'm trying to catch back up to the chat. Hi, Maggie. I just saw Maggie was there. Hello, hello. Do you, that you, okay, I missed part of that. Shane says, Margaret, if I see someone lowering, lowering, I will wait to see how far they will go. You have to refresh your items though. If you leave it, they'll stop showing. Oh, okay. And that's something else too that I don't really do a lot of the whole like sell similar. Um, it's something I've considered, but again, I don't have a whole lot of time. So I just keep plowing forward with the new stuff. But it's something to think about if it's been there for a while, for sure. So, um, Abby says, oh, I bet the last myth is that everything in Texas isn't always bigger. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be funny. Uh, oh, okay, Jenny says, I did a show on Thrifty Business with Jason about selling broken Christmas items. They will sell. Let's see. Rag says, my last two Starbucks mold mugs were chipped, and they still sold. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's see. Squirrel thrift. Oh, it jumped. Oh, dear. Do, do, do. Oh, thank you for the gazoon tights. Do I have it? Okay. Talented Bro Vlogs. Do I have any tips on growing a YouTube channel? Get to know your community because that's, that's really the pulse, right? Get to know the people that, that are watching you or the people that you're wanting to watch you. Um, and find out, you know, just ask. That's what I do. What do you guys need videos about? I want to help. That's why I'm here. Like, what's your, what's your reason for doing a channel? And then just ask your viewers. You know, my goal is to help people make money online so that they don't have to be dependent or worried about, about money. And so the more, the more imp input I get for knowing what will help, it, the better the channel will be. Because then I, I'm asking and Hang on, I'm looking for something. Um, yeah, being able to focus exactly on what, what viewers are really needing in their business. Business. Um, I feel like I'm saying um a lot. There's a way to change your name on eBay. Okay, thanks, Christine. Okay, then. Bolo Bay says, I started my eBay account before I was a seller, so my name is dumb, but I'm afraid to change it. You know, my, this is a, not maybe not well known fact. My name used to be something else too. I'm looking for my my things. So I can see how many viewers we got. Oh, 196 friends are watching. Go over there and hit that thumbs up. Does any okay trivia time? If you know this, which I doubt you do, I will I will do some kind of giveaway, and I will check the chat. I'll give it two minutes. If you know what my 
channel used to be called and what my eBay name used to be or Etsy name used to be, I will find something to send you as a giveaway. But yeah, it's been so long ago that I, I doubt anybody remembers. So, and it was so confusing. And so I was like, I have to change this. Every time I say it, people are like, what? <laughs> so I had to change it. Okay, so I don't know if there's a Google for that either. Do, okay. I, so yeah, different people are giving advice in the chat. Good advice. Um, oh, Renee says, myth, don't bother putting vintage in item titles. It doesn't help with search. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't do it too often, truly. But I do on some of my, especially, because even, even on eBay, people have said that. Like, don't put vintage because it's, I don't know. But I think it's something people search. But maybe it's overused? I'm not sure. I'm on the fence about that one. I do it some. I don't overuse it. Vicky says, could you talk a little about what eBay or Etsy charges? Uh, let me see my phone. How long we got? Um, eBay charges per listing. There's just a little, a little more involved. And then they, they um, charge a final value fee. They, there's a whole lot of things. And then if, depending on store levels, that's a whole separate video. Etsy's pretty cut and dry. It's 10, how much is it now per listing? <laughs> is it 10 cents a listing still? I'll have to go look. And then it's a percentage once you sell it. So it's pretty just like across the board. I don't even pay attention anymore. So i got to go see. Um, let's see. Nope. I don't see the name in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. I get thumbs down all the time. You know why they're thumbs down? Because, I don't know, I'm wearing the wrong jewelry or I have the wrong hair. I always think of so I try to think of some silly reason that people would thumbs down. But <laughs> it just it tickles me. So, I'm getting, I made my first, oh, congratulations, college debt slavery on Kindle. I made, you made your first Etsy sale the other day. Great. Can we have a nickname? Are you asking, like for your eBay store, are you asking me to give you a nickname? <laughs> so, okay, they're talking to each other about that. Oh, hello, uh, Fat Bird Finds. Thank you for being here again. Another one of my stalls uh, in the chat. So, thank you. J okay. Rhiannon says, junk jewelry pieces, even if they look like dollar store, do they sell? I, it, mm, it depends on the piece. I try to go, when I'm looking at jewelry that doesn't have a brand name to it, uh, I try to think about who would buy it. Uh, and if there was somebody like where it would fit into somebody's desires to, de to decide if I would want to sell it or not. Yeah. Um, okay. Shane says, through the back office on eBay, you can refresh 50 at a time. Nice. Okay. eBay Sellers Hub will also help you refresh items. Thank you for that. I'll have to double check that. Okay. Yannicka says, I do art with those rhinestone necklaces, so show what your craft, show the craft, oh, I have bags over there. Okay, next. No, it wasn't Homeschool Mom, it wasn't Texas Treasures, uh, my name, or they're guessing my name, when I first started. I wasn't homeschooling at the time. Texas Jewel Diva, no, it's, you, nobody's going to get it. I just, 20 cents a listing now, okay. <laughs> I have something like that, yeah. Um, so... I'm double checking. Bolo buddies, I got told that I should not wear hats. Oh, in your videos? People do their thing. I got told not to wear bangles, and I took that advice. Because I wear bangles, I like wearing bangle bracelets a lot. And I would wear them in the videos, and it made a lot of clangy, clangy noise. And I, I agreed. <laughs> so I stopped wearing them when I do videos. Um, 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 um. Yep, nobody's got it. So that's fine. I'll tell you what it is in just a second. I hate that I'm not talking, but I'm, tr I'm trying to see if there's any other, any other myths that I need to pull out of the chat to share you. People are, oh yeah, shipping stuff. Do, do, do. Can you use your nickname on your business? I think so. Depends on what your nickname is. 
And I think we're getting to the bottom of the chat. Thank you so much, Robin. She says, do I do all of my picks, listings, shipping, etc.? Um, your sister, uh, you, and you love the channel. Thank you. Yes, I do. I'm a one-woman show. I've, I've considered getting someone to help, but, but one, because of our homeschooling schedule, we're here, there, and everywhere, so I, it's hard for me to know when I'm going to be home to have somebody help me. And then I get really particular. I like things a certain way. and So I'm always overwhelmed. I always have too much that I need to be doing or have done. And I just don't get around to it all the time. Thanks, you. Thanks, couple of pictures. Thanks for being here. Um, oh, Bolo Buddy says because they said they can't see my eyes. Yeah, I get that. But you gotta feel comfortable. They don't know. Um, Glenn Mott says classic auto parts. Can you suggest another platform other than eBay? I don't know a whole lot about classic auto parts, but I like Etsy a lot. And I'm gonna be looking into Mercari, so that's cool. Oh, Liz Wet, and I'm sorry if I say your last name wrong. Wesh. Thank you so much, another one of our members. Thank you for being here. Yay. Um, Celeste says, I've never used videos on my listings on eBay. Just found a light up pin. On, how do you, I have, if you search on my channel, when you go to my main page on my channel, there's a little like search, it looks like a magnifying glass, and type in um, YouTube video, eBay listing, something like that. Embed, eBay listing, embed YouTube video. And I have a video where I show how to do that, definitely. So, <laughs> Bolo, is it a ball cap? Okay. Um, boop, 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 boop. Ah, a couple of pickers asked, do I ever show my listings on Instagram for extra exposure? I don't. Um, there are different strategies for using Instagram and some people do sell on Instagram and do post their thing. I post things that I find but I feel like my audience on Instagram aren't purchasers, they're re fellow resellers and um, I don't know, I don't like the word fan <laughs> but but people that watch the channel and people that like to see like what are we up to, what are like behind the scenes stuff. Um, so that's kind of what I use Instagram for. But I do uh, see other people doing that. And honestly, I wish there was a way I could stay following people on Instagram but then just hide it so I can show my support because when I'm going through my feed, when I see people, it's just like uh, listings that I'm looking at people selling stuff. Uh, I don't want to see that. I just Because that's not how I use Instagram, but I get it. So, But some people do, and some people make sales on Instagram, totally. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And I'm making a lot of do 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 sounds here too. Oh, hey Dan, long time no see. <laughs> okay, so I think that's it as far as our chat goes. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and definitely leave a comment if you're watching now or you're watching later. Leave a comment. Let me know what are some of the biggest myths you've heard in the reselling community that you have busted yourself, or that you're not quite sure if they are actual factual things or if they're just myths. So anyway, thanks so much for being here, everybody. And again, leave me that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content, you found some use in it, or if you felt like I could have done something better, leave me a thumbs down because I really do like your feedback. I want to have a great channel, a great resource for everybody out there that are, that are reselling. And yeah, so I will talk to you soon. Let me hit find the end button. Okay, have a great uh, evening, everybody.